Welcome back for Episode 3 of New Musical Monday Season 4. New Musical Monday, a Thornhill Theatre Space original, is a series showcasing new and lesser-known musicals from around the globe. Episode 3 showcases selections from the musical Holly and the Undercreature, book by Victoria Chavalier, music and lyrics by Steve Clark and Ed Plough. One thing that I find particularly exciting about Holly and the Undercreature is that it's massively spectacular, even though on paper you wouldn't imagine it. What I mean is that, um, for example, the whole play only takes place in one set. It's all the main character's front yard. And there aren't um, hundreds of characters on stage and a, you know, a whole ensemble of backup dancers. There's only a few characters in the show. And so the typical sources of spectacle, a whole lot of dancers on stage or um, massive set changes, that's not where this show gets its spectacle from. Instead, we have magical creatures that go through transformations on stage and magical objects of all sorts. And uh, there's thunderstorms and hail and even Aurora Borealis uh, on stage. And even other stuff that I shouldn't tell you about, you're just gonna have to come see it. <laughs> Holly and the Undercreature is a modern suburban fairy tale. It follows a 51-year-old woman as she begins to uncover a series of mysteries that have been right under her nose, in her yard, on her block, and within herself. The show examines the conflict between maintaining order and embracing chaos, and the pain, bravery, and rewards that come along with letting go of things that give you comfort. The story takes you on an adventure that includes magical cicadas, an underground creature, Memories and battles fueled by unexpected superpowers, all in two neighbors' yards. One thing that's kind of cool about Holly and the Undercreature is the way that we wrote it. Um, we were all living in different towns. Uh, Ed's in New York, Colleen is in Chicago, I'm in Traverse City, Michigan, and we all just had the idea of like, let's write this modern day fairy tale. And the brainstorming session was long. We didn't set any sort of timeline, but we laughed so hard. We had so many fun ideas, so many ideas that didn't even make it into the show. It What really started to come together was once we decided, okay, we're going to do a single set show. It's all going to take place in these two front yards on a neighborhood street. And then, surprisingly, by narrowing the scale of the set and the scenery and the timeline, it opened up the world to this sort of uh, epic magic happening right there on the street, on the na one neighborhood street. It's not that often that I find someone that wants to talk about gardening. Do Cascadians not enjoy gardening? No, it's not that often that I find someone that wants to talk. No one wants to talk. No, it's not that often that I find someone that I want to talk to. So I'm likable enough to you. Yes, you seem likable enough to talk to. A garden. Why do you like anything? I find it hard to say. It should not be hard to say. Oh, really? You select what goes and then you watch as it grows. The plants thrive on their own when you lay the ground work well. I plant this stuff because I just like how it smells. The flowers, the dirt, you like the smell of dirt. The flowers and the grass, I like how it sounds. The 
grass, the wind, the wind, the grass. You should lay down in the dirt, listen to the wind, and you'd be happier. But then the people would talk. You said they don't talk. I said that I don't talk to them. It's not that often that I find someone who likes to talk about gardening. In, in the, the middle, middle of the night. So Holly and the Undercreature is really innovative, and it's been fun to work on it for that reason. For example, we use a contemporary song style, songs you might hear at a rock show or or on the radio or something like that, but we still use all of the strategies and approaches that some of our biggest musical theater heroes uh, passed down to us. The show is one location, but it's a grand, large-scale adventure, uh, and that seems very innovative to me. Um, also, just Holly herself, our protagonist, is an atypical protagonist. She's um, a recently divorced 50-year-old woman, and she's not defined as a parent or a spouse. Instead, she is defined on her own terms. She's a strong, independent woman, and, and she's driven uh, to, you know, reconcile her past and her present and her future to see what she is capable of and to push herself to the limit. And um, it's an innovative kind of story to tell, and uh, it's been exciting because of that. My collaborators and I are very interested in exploring dramatic and literary genres, placing them in a contemporary setting and putting them to music. This is a theme that runs through many of our musicals, with Holly being the latest one, looking at the genre of fairy tale. Uh, we center our storytelling on characters and settings that are seemingly ordinary, in this case a 51-year-old woman living in the suburbs and going through a divorce, but tell the stories through genres that are based in adventure and magic highlighting the extraordinary aspects of all of our lives. I think the music for Holly and the Other Creature is fairly unique, particularly for a musical. Um, the way that we wrote it was a lot over the computer. We wanted to use a lot of interesting sound effects, and uh, it's got a lot of digital magic happening, but also we wanted it to sound very ancient and natural so we have this idea of sort of stretching the boundaries of modern music in that it was feeling like it was from the future but also really calling on sounds of the past it also was fun to write with ed uh, we had a lot of phone calls particularly about the lyrics but a lot of the sounds we would just make a sound put it on a file send it to one another and then they put it in and they put in a, ed would put in a sound and he would respond to it and uh we made some great music uh doing that and then the lyrics on top of that of course tell the story and reveal care This is me waking up every Monday And this is the alarm going off every day It's every Sunday Stuck into the same rotten rhythm Stuck into a pattern of work, sleep, eat, and repeat Don't you think you are overreacting? We've got it good, stop trying to change it I swear sometimes you're like a slobbering bulldog We have an awesome life, now you want to rearrange it Baby, this is so crazy Don't you ever want to take And move to an island After selling off the house and the business and the cars We say goodbye to neighbors and the pressures So we can go anywhere We can do anything You clearly aren't thinking what you're saying is crazy We can't sell the house And don't you like the neighbors? Neglecting your business is irresponsible Nobody ever gives up when things are fun Baby, this is so crazy Close. 
them in for some peace of mind. Steve and Kalina and I have been writing musicals together for 20 years, and in a lot of ways we feel like we're still just getting started. We've got so much more to write, and so it's just, um, it's been a really wonderful and rewarding partnership and friendship all these years, and it's something that we genuinely enjoy doing. Um, Holly and the Undercreature is our fifth musical that we've written together, and it was part of a project to create a modern day fairy tale. That was the beginning concept before we had Holly or the Undercreature or any of it. The idea was to write a contemporary modern day fairy tale. And that was an exciting starting point. But from there, uh, as we dug into it and made all sorts of new discoveries about what the show was going to be and, you know, that amazing point when the show starts taking on a life of its own and kind of telling you how to write it, uh, it only got more and more exciting as we went along and now it's ready to go to the next stage to to find um its feet on stage and i'm really excited to see what kind of discoveries we can make uh during that phase i'm really looking forward to that we hope that holly is timeless in some sense by addressing universal conflicts we all experience when deciding between risk and comfort it also points to unknowing harm that can be caused by maintaining the status quo, which is particularly important. Right you know, now. I like to talk a lot about the writing process because it's very fun. It's very involved. I like working with my collaborators. We've had this partnership for 20 years, writing musicals. and uh, But I'm really excited to see Holly and the Undercreature come to the next step. I think it's unique. I think people will come to the theater not exactly knowing what to expect. They know it's about Holly. They know it's about an undercreature. Uh, but what they're eventually going to see is somebody discovering themselves and discovering their power, both magical power and just like internal spiritual power through this weird, wild ride of a show. Uh, the music's very exciting. It's kind of mystical. Each song is unique, but there's just definitely a sound that that brings it all together, and it's a sound I've not often heard in musicals. So I hope uh, people see the show. I hope people really enjoy it uh, as much as we enjoyed putting it together. There is no win. should be happy and move on. Welcome the future. 9,000 years ago, 
I spoke the spell for the very first time And the words that ordered the world Stole some magic to pay for the crime People were happy Why can't people be happy? Why don't they thank me? Why don't they care? We conjure the future We add structure to the night By perfectly placing our spell In the heart of the fairy sprite Methodical and logical Lawful and clean Pristine And the curse will work To keep it that way To keep it that way Nine thousand years from now I will be here Watching the sun And the delicate buzzing Of magical monsters Will not be heard By anyone You will be happy I will make you all happy Holly, goodbye Sorry about your tree
Thank you for joining us for Episode 3 of Season 4 of New Musical Monday. We hope you will join us next week for Episode 4 and follow Thornhill Theatre Space to keep up to date with all things digital theatre.